Let's kick it over there to Fayetteville. Shea, they had a 110-play scrimmage over the weekend. And how about this, Shane? K.J. Jefferson, our guy here, mm-hmm. three passes of at least 40 yards in the scrimmage, oh. including a 65-yard touchdown to Matt Landers. Matt Landers had two touchdowns, Shane. Mm. Warren Thompson had a big play. Jadon Hazelwood made a big uh, play in the red zone. Trey Knox, the tight end, had two catches of, of 20 or more yards, including a 35-yard reception. So, man, <laughs> when you think the Arkansas Razorbacks, you think offensive line, you think tough, you think running yeah. game with Sam Pittman running that show, yet you get these tidbits here of a, of a passing game that yeah. looks to be firing on all cylinders. My God, I mean, Arkansas <laughs> – who knows? They may have the best offense in the SEC. Dude, if if Arkansas can stretch the field, watch out. I mean, that's we know this team's going to run. We know this team's going to be good at moving the chains. But if they can keep the secondary on their heels, mm-hmm. golly, I mean, anything can happen. And by anything, I mean everything's going to happen against you because the avenues will open. KJ, if he can get a four-yard head start, he's going to get a lot of rushing yards. So uh, this is – I think this is great news because we've heard the hype. We've heard about the receivers, you know, who's emerging. We don't quite know, you know, Sam talks about that here in a minute. But the fact that you've got so many weapons and then it's starting to pay off in the scrimmage in the game-like environment, mm-hmm. man, that's that's that's. I would be on cloud nine if I was a Razor. I'm on cloud nine now. I didn't grow up a Razorback fan, so I can only imagine what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, so let's kick it over to Sam Pittman. Shane says the corners and the receivers, those are the two biggest battles on the roster right now. Yeah. You love to hear that. And I thought it was interesting, Shane, how ready is the team for the season? You know, maybe it's just coach speak, but he's pumping the brakes on all that, Shane. Hey, <laughs> hey we ain't even close to being ready yeah. for the field. So, uh, let's kick it over to Sam. We had a right around 110 total plays today. Um, we went one offense versus two offense, two offense versus one offense, uh, three versus three, then came back and did good on good, one on one, two on two, three on three, somewhere around – close to 30 plays uh, in those two racks a piece. And then we had a third down situation where we stayed out there eight plays in a row. We had a high red situation, uh, a low red uh, situation in a two minute. And the two minute was very short, um, even though the one offense got the ball uh, down there, able to kick a field goal. It uh, was on a 50, 22 seconds, no timeouts. And they were able to get us in field goal range. Uh, twos weren't weren't really close on that. Uh, some some things, and but I think there's if you're looking at battles on our team, that's to me that's that's the biggest battle uh, that we have is corner, and probably the next one is who who would run out there with your ones at wide receiver, you know, because you obviously have Keytron and Mad and you know. Uh, uh, more and so I don't know they're all really good players so good players talked earlier about game shape just in terms of overall level of competition and level of execution how close is the team to where you want them to be at three weeks out before the start of the season Mm, as a whole team not not real close we got we got a lot to work on I've been bragging on some positions but you got to put them all you know you can't just have a Really good player over here, good players over. You got to put it all together. I thought we, the second half of the scrimmage, I thought we put together a little bit on both sides of the ball, you know, playing well together. Um, but we're not, we're not there yet. You know, the first part of practice, the first part of fall, a lot of times is you're not worried about playing together as a team. You're worried about surviving practice, you know, and it was hotter and hot, you know, out there. And then the next mode you go is you're wondering, you know, you're you're worried about your position and where you're at on the depth chart. And at some point that all comes together is, hey, I, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. Now, how do I make my teammate better? We're not there yet. No, we're not. We're not a team that's bickering and fighting and all. I don't mean that, but we're not a unit yet. We have got some good players, and we're not a consistent unit on anywhere yet. But we're we're further 
uh, uh, we're further along right now than we were last year at this point. All right, Chase, are you buying it? Are, are the Razorbacks <laughs> ready, or is he just is he letting his team know, hey, we got to stay focused here? No, yeah, this is – you know, he's got pocket aces over there, and he's just acting <laughs> – he's slow playing this thing. No, I, I think I, – obviously, there's going to be some rust. You know, a lot of these guys, especially on defense, it's the first time they started tackling. So, yeah. uh, there's there's going to there's gonna be some mistakes being had out there, and it's cleaning up those little dumb penalties. It's cleaning up, you know, the little boneheaded mistakes that you may make out there. And you that's what this is for. It's what fall camp is for. So – I mean, there's a little bit of truth to what he's saying, but again, you don't want to put your expect. You don't want to go out there, and again, back to media, Mike. You come out there and you say we're gonna we're gonna kick ass. I mean, I remember when Lane Kiffin came out and says we're gonna be singing Rocky Top down there in Gainesville. You know, that's they used that the entire right. season. You know, expecting a victory over the Florida Gators. Well, if you come out and saying exactly what Sam's doing, well, then okay. Yeah, he may have expectations to win the West, but he's not coming out here and saying that. Right. And, you know, for the Razorbacks, Shane, I mean, it is so important that they come out and they're already firing on all cylinders because they've yeah. got Cincinnati in the opener. I believe it's mm -hmm. ESPN nationally televised. They've got mm -hmm. South Carolina, a, a very, very, very improved team coming to Fayetteville that's going to be looking to shock the SEC. I mean, there is there is no time here to to be, you know, we gotta no. we'll ease into this thing by week three. We'll have it. If you, if you wait till week three, your season <laughs> could be in the toilet because you. I'm not. I mean, Arkansas is gonna be favored in both those games, but if they don't show up and play, they could lose both of them too. You know what? That's right. I mean, it's it, you're not starting out with UTC and Mercer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you are playing some high quality opponents. I give Cincinnati a hard time, but you know this. It's a program that's well coached, and you cannot afford to come out with mistakes and I, right. I think that's the big thing is you know there's a lot of seniority on this team there's a lot of um there's a lot of folks coming back and and I think that's the main thing with Sam is he's going to make sure these guys are running efficient and if they're doing that then they can beat a team like Cincinnati and it's not even going to be close but the re the way you keep a team like them in is coming out making stupid mistakes and that's what they got to clean up here in the next couple of weeks I sure as hell hope they don't have this show in Cincinnati, Shane, because because we're they're gonna have bulletin board material for weeks, but just based on one episode, you know what? Oh, I know. I hate Cincinnati. And I don't know if it's because Boots Jones was up there at one time or or what. There's just something about it. I just not a big fan. Maybe it's the Bengals. I hate. Ste I'm a Steeler fan, so maybe it's just Cincinnati altogether. Yeah, Sky town. Skyline Chili sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Who puts chili in spaghetti noodles? I mean, that's just something you, you throw to get like, okay, I've got two ingredients left in my refrigerator. Let's put them <laughs> together and call it a call it a meal. You know, that's not a meal. That's that's garbage. <laughs> I can hear I can hear somebody somebody's so damn mad. I can hear him tweeting right now. Hey, have you never had this chili noodles? <laughs> you know, no, I've I've had them all, man. I've 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 been around the block, uh, but I will tell you. If you're going to do chili, there's no other way. Have you done it with like Fritos and stuff? Oh, of course, man. Now that's now that's a different that's a different thing. It's just I'm not a spaghetti noodle guy, so <laughs> I like Olive Garden. Olive Garden's trash. I, I'm just, I'm saying that we're not going to get sponsorships from. I apologize, Mike, but we're not no. In, I mean, no endless breadsticks. I mean, I like endless bowls of food and and stuff, but oh, I know anything. I, yeah, I'm just not a I'm not a big pasta guy. <laughs> Well, thanks Sorry. for ruining that sponsorship. I don't know. We, I'm, I'm getting we, I had it's, them on the it's, line. It's almost dinner too. time, Mike. You know, <laughs> I'm just I'm starting to think about it. And I'm glad my wife's not making spaghetti. So, 